Today we begin our study of the book, Building Below the Baseline. Really, it's talking about we who have been saved for a while, making sure that our foundation is solid. And we're going to be using, we're going to begin with Philippians chapter 3, verses 9 through 14. Let's just read them together uh, very quickly. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 and following, it says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous, righteousness which is of God by faith, verse 10, that I may know him, him is Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you as we begin this study of this book that you would help us to have our hearts open, our minds open, and I pray that you would help me to teach clearly, and I pray that uh, as a group, as we study this topic together, that you will really speak to our hearts very specifically. Help us to see areas of our lives that need to be changed and where we need to have growth and we need you to work. Help us be willing to change so you can be honored in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we, when we stand before God... We who are saved, we are declared righteous in Jesus Christ. As we saw here in these verses in Philippians chapter 3, we are declared righteous. And the Bible gives us two illustrations, two pictures that help us to understand our relationship and the importance of intimacy with Jesus Christ in our Bibles. First is the illustration of the vine and the branches. And uh, it, it's very clear in John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, Jesus said, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So we see that if we, if we lose connection with the vine, Jesus Christ, we who are branches, we're growing out of Jesus Christ. If we lose that connection, we have lost our power and ability to produce fruit. Um, and so the second picture, first is the vine and the branches. The, the second picture is of the the cornerstone and it's it's really a picture of the building that's dependent upon the foundation of the cornerstone Jesus Christ himself is that foundational point and you know uh, the verses in Ephesians chapter 2 speak about uh, the whole church is built upon the cornerstone of Jesus Christ he is our firm foundation and for many many Christians we have Many Christians have the ability, including you and I, to be able to put on a mask of spirituality, but it's fake. It's only, it's only a mask. It's not real. And so today we want to talk about some things. We're going to begin to talk about this study will be a study of how to make sure our foundation is strong. Not only what it looks like on the outside, but what it looks like on the inside of our heart as well. There is a famous tower in, uh, in Italy. Uh, as I'll show you the picture, you probably know what it is. 
it has the name of it is it was supposed to be the original name was supposed to be the Tower of Pisa but now today we call it what the Leaning Tower the Leaning Tower of Pisa why because uh, many many years ago in it's they started to build in the year 1173 and when they began to build the tower in 1173 they did not go deep enough with the foundation really for this tower the foundation is only 10 feet deep it's not deep enough and it was built on sand and so when they when they built and they finished in in 1372 every person that came and looked at it, you can see it's it's leaning it, it's not right it's it's not straight up and today many many people will travel to Italy just to see this tower that leans uh, it's a curiosity but no person wants wants to live in there because maybe one day it's gonna fall down we don't know and so today we want to talk about some important things if you have your book with you um, this book we're going to be studying through I'm going to give you there are places for you to fill in and I'm going to give you uh, those things today as we study through so number one we're going to talk about the foundation of the first fill in is relationship the foundation of relationship relationship um, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 this is in in your book as well it says that I may know him Jesus Christ that's a relationship with Jesus Christ I want the first thing about having the right foundation is having the right relationship with him that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death Paul here is speaking about uh, an intimacy a deep knowledge of God not only oh I know who he is I know his name I know where he was born I know his mother's name not not facts but knowing him I want to know him intimately not just know about him but know him and so the first thing is that relationship the word here in the Greek language that is the word know it has the idea of understanding or being familiar with the person and so this verse it gives us uh, three ways that we can know Jesus Christ the first letter a is to know his person to know his person uh, this is more than knowing about him with our mind uh, it is knowing him personally ourselves intimately knowing him knowing Jesus Christ means that we spend time with him uh, it means that we are sensitive to obey what he wants for us um, it, it means I separate some time with just me and God alone and we're, we're intimate I pray with him I read the Word of God but I, I spend time with with God and I get to know him intimately um, a person can have spiritual standards in their lives rules for their lives and still not know God there are many many religions where the people themselves from their religion have very very strict rules on their behavior but they don't know God so this is not talking about rules this is talking about knowing God personally knowing him as a person um, do you feel that you're you spend enough enough time with God alone uh, do you feel that that the Holy Spirit has the ability to draw you into truths uh, do you sense that uh, there are times when God pushes you to witness to a person those show signs of intimacy with God and knowing his person uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 says this the eyes of your understanding being enlightened 
that ye may know what is that hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So God wants to do more than simply you, for you, you to simply to know his name. He wants you to know him. One person said the end of all learning is to know God and out of that knowledge to love and, and intim, imitate him. And I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be putting these things up here for you. Uh, so you know where I'm at. I just thought about it right now. For, for example, a husband and a wife. Uh, you know, have you seen a husband and wife who've been married for a long time? It's, it's almost like they know what the other person's thinking before they say the word. How did it happen? Well, they've spent time together. And they know each other. They know each other intimately. And that's what we're talking about here. If you have been married for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. If you have been saved for a long time, we should be able to see the influence of God on your life personally. So that's, the, that's letter A. Letter B is the second one, is to know His power. To know His power. Uh, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 it says I want to know the power of his resurrection and so we think about the Greek word here for power power is is the Greek word dunamis we get our English word dynamite you know dynamite from that it shows that kind of power and really that power from Jesus Christ is available for us today and part of knowing him part of having a right foundational relationship with God is that we will know his power in 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us unto glory and virtue. God wants us to, to demonstrate this power. Paul wrote, I, I love these verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Paul, he, he said this, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God we need to remember this it's not about how fancy our presentation is really the question is do we have the power of God evident in our lives and that's this the second point so the goal for each of us should be to have a relationship with God that shows that we know his person second that we know his power is evident in our lives and then third that we know his presence that we know his presence it says in in again Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable copying his death um, really the word fellowship in that verse in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 the word fellowship is talking about communication or communion with God uh, rather than you and I complaining about the things that are happening against us Maybe we ought to be able to look at the sufferings and the things, the persecution that comes back to us and say to the Lord, I want to experience your presence through these tough situations I face. Uh, really, in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin verse 16 let us therefore come boldly 
into the, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The reality is, the reality is that God knows you and I are going to face tough situations. He has allowed us to have His Holy Spirit. He allowed Jesus Christ to, to go through and endure sufferings for us so that we could connect with Him and we could know Him better. And so part of the result of the, the fellowship of suffering is that we become closer, more, more intimate with our Heavenly Father. And so we understand that the deepest times of fellowship with Christ, when are they going to happen? They're going to happen when we have the most intense pressure of our lives. We will turn to God and we will get to know Him more intimately. So don't complain. Thank God for those times. Let me give you the next uh, number two. First, we saw the foundation of uh, relationship. Second, we see the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith. Going on in Philippians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, it says this, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also, I am ap apprehended of Christ Jesus. Our faith should not, should not stop after we're saved. Uh, truthfully, as our relationship with God grows and matures, our confidence in Him will grow and mature as well. Uh, let me give you an example. When a baby is born, uh, all of us are excited. You know, I remember uh, people would ask me, how long was your baby? And I remember, oh, well, I think uh, 19 inches long. Why is that important? How much did it weigh? Uh, what color is eyes? What color is the hair? Does it have ha all these questions? Because we're excited about the new birth of a baby. But if after six months, the baby is still the same length, and still the same weight, and nothing has changed, we would look at that baby and say, something is wrong. That baby is not growing, it's not maturing. And you and I are the same spiritually. We need to be growing in Christ, and our faith should be growing in Christ. People should be able to examine our lives after six months of being saved, six years, 50 years of being saved later, people should be able to examine our lives and see the influence of this relationship and the foundation of faith. There are two things that we can see uh, that show our faith is growing. First is the promise of the resurrection. In, um, in Ephesians chapter 2, Verse 1 and verses 5 and 6, it says this, And you hath he qui uh, quickened, or made alive, who were dead in trespass and sins. Verse 5, Even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened, quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You and I have the promise of the resurrection, and that resurrection should influence our lives. In Galatians chapter 2, very famous verse, in verse 20, it says this, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We have the fellowship of the, the resurrection. We have that promise of the resurrection. And uh, knowing Christ means that our lives, our dreams, our desires, 
died before. We have a B.C., before Christ. Those dreams, desires, and wants, they died. And now we, as we come into life with Christ, all of those things, our lives, our dreams, our desires, our goals, all of those things become alive in Him and what He wants for us. And that demonstrates this relationship. In Romans, Romans chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You and I have our faith made strong because of our relationship to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our attitudes and our actions and our lives should show the reality of the resurrection of Christ. Let me give you the second thing that comes from the foundation of faith. The second thing is the process of transformation. Transformation does not happen instantly. It is a process. A Christian, uh, you, you, you accept Christ, you get saved yourself, you don't instantly become a spiritual person. It takes time. It's a transformation period that happens. And uh, if we want transformation to happen in our personal lives, how are we going to do it? Well, we need to be intimate with Jesus Christ on a regular, everyday basis. You and I need to make sure that we, uh, Paul said in Philippians 3, I've not attained, I've not attained, I haven't reached, I haven't arrived yet. I'm still pursuing that perfection with Christ. I'm still pursuing that relationship of intimacy with Christ. And that's how we will see our lives transformed. Um, many of you will know people who have joined uh, the military, you know, uh, Marines or the, the Navy or the Army or whatever, or the Air Force. You know people who have joined. Some have joined there. I remember one man, uh, I've heard his testimony many times before, and he said, I, I was tired of people telling me what to do, so I joined the Marines. <laughs> And of course, every day he was told what to do. But what happens is you see a person, maybe skinny, goes in and they begin training and they have to do push-ups and pull-ups and they have to run and they do all this exercise. And six months later, you see the same person and you look at them, whoa, they have a transformation. Something's happened in them. They've changed uh, their behavior, their, behavior, their, uh, their habits, their goals, their dreams, they've changed. It's been a process of transformation. And God wants to do that with us. In Romans chapter 8, a wonderful verse, verse 29, it says, it says uh, Paul said, For whom he, he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. I want to tell you that God has a plan decided before for you. He has a plan decided before for me. I love that thought. Wow, God has a plan for me, for my life, and he has for you too. And God's, God's plan, pre, predestined plan for you, pre destination. Don't get nervous about the word. It means that God had a plan before. That's all it means. Pre, before, destination means arrival place. God had a plan for you before to arrive, before you were born. What? You and I, He wants us to be made, become a copy of the image, image of Christ. He wants that for you and for me. That's His goal. So we've seen the foundation of relationship. We've seen the foundation of faith. And the third is the, the, the fixation or the focus on the will. And so I want you to see, uh, Paul said, I am not, I'm not looking back. I'm going to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. I have my eyes fixed. I'm focused. Fixation, it means be focused. 
And so Paul was dis determined that he was going to finish strong. Paul, in his life, he pictured it like in a race. You know, in a race, there's, there's a finish line. And all the, all the runners, they're, they're running and running. They want to hit that finish line first. And that's what Paul said. I'm looking. I have that line. I'm getting closer and closer and closer to that line. I want to I wanna break through first. And that's, that's what he's talking about here. Many, many Christians, we have known many who have quit, got out of the race, and, and have not finished for God. And, and that's, that's sad. And it's a burden for me. I hope, I hope it's a burden for you as well. We don't want to... Uh, allow our lives to finish before we cross over that line. And it's important that we keep focused. So there are two things, uh, three things, I'm sorry, three things that are important in this fixation of the will. And the first one is that Paul recognized his position. He recognized where he was. He wasn't foolish. He, he wasn't trying to deceive himself to think, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual giant up here. Oh, no. He said, I have not yet apprehended. I've not touched the goal yet. I'm still trying and trying and running and running. I'm trying to reach, but I have not arrived yet, Paul said. And, and so because of that, Paul was not lazy in his commitment to Christ. And you and I need to be careful. Many who are watching today, you've been saved for a long time. And if you're not careful, you will say, oh, I've already done that. I'm not, oh, no, no, no. You, you can become lazy. You can sit back. You can quit the race. Don't quit. The second thing, Paul rejected his, his past. Now, if you think about Paul... He said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. What Paul was saying is, I have done some things in the past that I am not, I'm not proud about. I, I look back, I'm embarrassed about some things I have done in the past. If I'm not careful, I will allow those things in the past to be an anchor for me that will block me from going forward. If you have noticed in a race, the runners do not carry a backpack on their back. They don't do that. The book of Hebrews says we're to lay aside every sin and, and the weight which says so easily beset us. Um, in, that, in that book of Hebrews chapter 12, it says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and, and keep our eyes off. Don't, don't be looking back. When I was a, a runner in high school, I ran. I remember the first race that, that I ran, 100-yard uh, race that I was going in. I remember I was running and running, and I could not see anybody in front of me. So for one second, I looked like this. And when I looked back, two guys over here had gone by me. So my, my glance back cost me uh, sec first or second place, I ended in third place because I looked back and two others passed. And I want to tell you that Paul said, I'm not going to look back at the failures of my past. Also, one other danger is we look back at the successes of our past. That's just as dangerous as the failures. Don't look back. You cannot run fast forward if you're looking back. So Paul said, I'm going to reject my past. The third thing he said is, Paul said, I'm going to run. Why? I want to win. I want to win the prize. You see, it's not wrong for us to want to win the prize. The prize is a good thing. Uh, Paul said, I'm going to press. I'm going to press toward that, that mark for the prize. I want to win the prize. How, how do we do it? we got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. We know that Jesus Christ is our prize. You know a marathon. How long? Marathon. Right, it's... 26.2 miles, they tell me. 
I've never experienced myself, but 26.2 miles is a marathon. Uh, well, let's imagine though, let's, let's imagine ourselves that there's a runner and he gets to the place he's at 13.1, 13.1 miles and he begins, hey, yes, I'm the winner. He's, o he's only halfway through. He's not the winner. Why would he celebrate halfway through? And it's the same for you and I. We need to understand the prize is not in the middle of the race. The prize that we want and we desire is at the end of the race. And so you and I need to be faithful all the way through. Well, this brings us to the end of this first chapter. What I, what I want to do is remind you of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7, Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want to ask you, uh, a man who is going to finish well must build below the baseline strong. This study that we'll do together is designed to help us to do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to realize that these things are true that we've talked about today. Help us to build our relationship, intimate relationship with you strong. Help us to keep our faith strong. And Lord, help us to keep our focus strong, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.